All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War. Back at you again with another lesson. And I uh, really don't have a title yet for the lesson, but I wanted to speak about the chariots in which the world ethnically calls UFOs. All right. And it's more sightings, okay? The government are admitting, you know, dealing with the angels, all right? See, we call them IFOs because we identify these flying objects. And, you know, the world call them UFOs. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe there's a new name in which they're calling them, all right? But, um, but we identify what they are through the scriptures, all right, and through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right, Bashem Rachachwadash, you know, through the Holy Spirit, Spirit Holy. And, um, you know, this is our salvation. This is, you know, what the Lord's elect will be delivered in, whether it's um, many chariots or just one chariot. But we do know the Lord is the Lord of hosts, which is the Lord of armies. He's going to bring a flood. And the fleet of his army of his of his chariots to destroy Esau and his wicked society. You know, so without further ado, oh, I forgot I even had that one. Hey, that's the spirit of the Lord. I didn't even know I had that one right there. You know. So anyway, all right. Let me go into the book of Revelation, chapter one, verse seven, because when you see these chariots. They should remind you of the Lord. All right. When we see these chariots, you know, we know that it's Yahweh by Shimmy Shai's doing. Okay, and not some species of aliens that live, you know, where Esau would tell you they live somewhere in the galaxy light years away. If that's the case, then why are they here? Okay? Because of I, you know. There was a video that was on ROT a couple of weeks back or a week ago. This Edomite was explaining to the woman and telling her that aliens do exist, but there's so many light years away from us that it will probably never be possible for us to meet, you know? And uh, the lady was asking the man, is it safe to tell her son that they exist? And he said, yeah, you know? And, and Esau's mindset is that you know, they're going to be going back and forth to Mars and uh, have some sort of population on Mars, you know, through um, this circuit they're creating or they're, they're talking about creating through Elon Musk, where they can get back forth to Earth, to Mars. And that's just ridiculous. All right. And that shows you the pride of E. So anyway. All right. Let's go back and read the scripture here. Revelations 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so, to walk. All right? So it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. Now we know these clouds are not the physical clouds that produce rain. These clouds are in representation of the angels of the Lord. All right? But you see a multiple lights which is referred to as clouds in the scriptures. These are the vehicles in which the angels of the Lord ride in. All right. Uh, there was a report of uh, one Edomite. He was speaking about how, how um, that in these chariots, and, and I don't know how he know, you know, but just for food for thought, he was explaining how these chariots, how they could look small on the outside but he said in the inside, they're bigger than 10 football fields. Now, there was also reports years ago. I forgot the guy's name, the Edomite named Norman. I don't know his first name, but I remember brothers were sharing a video heavy and posting it. And he said that they have a chip from NASA that actually seen the angels come off the ships. And they were about seven feet, eight feet tall. And he said they were black. No, I did not call them objects. That was too neuter for me. Okay. Um, I had a Stanford professor said, you ought to call my objects normally. No. They have all of the qualities of a vehicle. Mm -hmm. 
they can move. You know, they're just like a missile or anything like that. So that much we can say about them, for sure. Okay. So I'm calling them in. Okay. Okay, somebody comes along and says, well now where would you manufacture one that's two and a half earth lengths long? And um, that's a hard question to answer. So are you not positing the idea that they, those vehicles contain, you know, beings who are, you know, maybe like us? Yeah, I only go along with Garmin images. And if you want to know about people kind of thing, um, there is the ship that picked up the Voyager uh, capsule um, at the Alameda uh, Naval Shipyard, and they they have a picture there of um, I think I think it's uh, the Apollo. Flight that the bugs and uh, and Neil were on, uh, but anyway, there is one image there that shows black people getting off. So people with dark skin getting off. Not dark, black. Black skin. Really black. Yeah. Were they tall? Yes. Very tall. Yeah. How tall? Do you know? Well, they got out the. Uh, the doorway, I don't know how high that is, but well, what, it's safe, safe. Seven, seven feet would be probably a conservative estimate. Um, Have you heard about Clark McClellan's uh, statement about that? No. Oh, you haven't? No. They were black, you know, meaning very dark. You know, he explained that to his interviewer. I think her name was Camelot that was interviewing him, you know. So those are the angels. They got a glimpse of the angels, all right, which the angels look like us, which are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native, and Seminole Indians, all right, the children of Jacob. I was young back again. It says, behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. How is every eye going to see him? Because the skies are going to be filled with chariots of the Lord, all right, and especially when you see this. You know, Independent, Independence Day, the movie, yeah, they got it right because they was inspired by the scriptures, you know, you know, more so probably by the prophets. Of course, they was inspired by the scriptures, but inspired by what they heard from the prophets of the Lord speaking this gospel, all right, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, and these precepts. Because, you know, this is a, a snippet of the Independence Day with the, with the ship that covered almost half the earth you know and it shot down the laser beam the green laser beam and tore up the building all right well this is you know sort of what Yahweh Shai is going to come like you know this gigantic ship plus many other ships warships all right so let's move on to um Another precept here, which I want to go into the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 66 and 15. It says, um, For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord Yahweh plead with all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. Alright? So it says, For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Alright? The chariots are the angels, man. These are our vehicles home, man. So all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Because there is a reward for the righteous. And the blameless souls. Okay. 
you know, you know, us up the whole four legs, starting with the men, down to you few sisters who believe, you know, we don't have to worry, you know, we just gotta maintain it with our integrity and this truth and endure all the way to the end, no matter how rough it get, because we have a kingdom, all right? We have a promise that was given to us from the heavenly father through his son, all right? And that's to have a world without end, an everlasting kingdom, you know? Matter of fact, I'm going to just uh, let, let, let me uh, get a quick precept. And this is in the book. Okay, this is in the book of Daniels. I believe it's 7 and 18. It says, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And how is the Lord going to take the kingdom? We're seeing it by the ways of his chariots through Yahweh Shai, all right? And Michael the archangel, which is the war angel, all right? Did not the scripture say the Lord is a man of war? Okay. You know, what is Esau going to do when he see these chariots come into our dimension and to recover the remnant of his elect? All right, he's going to fight. He's going to fight. As it's prophesied. Alright. That's in Isaiah uh, 13. You know, I, I get it in a second after this. Read a few snip. Alright, it says, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, which the saints are the Israelites, and the ultimate Israelite is Yahweh Shai. It says, And possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Let me jump down to verse 27. It says, And the kingdom and dominion. And the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Okay? So there's a kingdom that's going to be given to the Lord's people, starting with the elect, the saints, which are the Israelites, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And all dominion shall serve and obey him. And now just recently, Elder Apostle Tahari did a lesson and he brought out the word uh, bless. And he said, you know, looking it up, you know, the word bless actually means to have slaves. So, you know, when you go back to Jacob and Esau and you read about the blessings, you know, Jacob's blessing is that all nations will bow down unto him. That's the kingdom. So truly we'll be blessed. All right, truly will be blessed, man. To have servants and handmaids and to be rulers and judges as it as it was written to be. All right, from the very beginning. Okay? Now, real quick, I want to go into the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 13 and 1, it says the burden of Babylon which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain Exhort the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. All right, what is that? Um, okay, what, what is the banner? The banner is the Bible. Okay, the banner is the Bible. So lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, okay, upon this government. Exhort the voice unto them, which is the voice of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Shake the hand, all right, point at them, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for my anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. Matter of fact, let me read that again, verse three. I have commanded my sanctified ones, and I have also called my mighty ones for my anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. So these are, the Lord is talking about the angels, man. Okay, his mighty ones are the angels. It says, verse 4, the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of kingdoms, of nations gathered together. Yahweh of hosts mustereth the hosts of the battle. So this is going into World War III. This is a, a vision, a sight to see where the other nations are banding together, you know, and, and, and ready to fight. It says, make a tumultuous noise of kingdoms of nations gathered together. Yahweh of hosts, which is the Lord of armies, mustereth the hosts of the battle. Meaning Yahweh Shai is going to referee this. 
All right, he's gonna be the referee, man. <laughs> Verse five, they come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even Yahweh, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. You know, which is which is gonna be the thermonuclear missiles. It says, how ye for the day of Yahweh is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid, pains and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travelleth, and they shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Verse 9, behold, the day of Yahweh cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. All right, now the point is that the Lord is going to send his mighty ones, which are the angels, all right, to destroy this whole land, all right, right along with the thermonuclear destruction. Those the intercontinental ballistic missiles that are made of man, they are the Lord's weapon, okay, weapons. All right, so let me get back on track, Lord willing, and um, let's go into the book of Zechariah. Zechariah the fifth chapter and I'll speed read it says then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked and behold a flying robe and he said unto me what seest thou and I answered I see a flying robe the length thereof is 20 cubits and the breathe thereof is 10 cubits then said he unto me this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth for every one that stilleth shall be cut off as on this side according to it and every one that sweareth shall be cut off on that side according to it all right so what is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth all right that's these chariots man okay that's these chariots that you see that around the world all right in the philippines new zealand all right everywhere man everywhere they are sighted everywhere. These are the curse that go forth the fit, go across the face of the earth. Okay. And it says, For every one that stilleth shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. I will bring it forth, saith Yahweh of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. And into the house of him that swear falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house. And shall consume it with the timber thereof. And the stones thereof. Alright. So the Lord is going to make his angels come into the house of the thief. Who's the thief? That's Esau. Who did Esau steal? He stole Jacob. Alright. And right now Jacob is still in, still, uh, in captivity in his hands. And that's why Esau wants to. You know, put this all inside your body to make you his perpetual servant forever, his slave forever. He wants to further our captivity. All right. This is why he's doing gene editing, you know, DNA editing to reverse what is written. But it's not going to happen, man, because the Lord said he's going to take him while he's eating. So it's all lining up perfectly, man. All right. Let me read verse five. It says the angels that talk. Okay. It's going to end up going into the breakdown. So, okay, I'll leave it right there. Okay, let me get the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. It says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which say he, ye have heard of me. Salakia, and this is a lot of men a parking lot. Nigga got his music up, man. Come right by me, man. Anyway, it says, um, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. It says, And when therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou, are at, will thou at this time restore the, again the kingdom of, to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father hath put in, in his own power. Let me read that again. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. 
All right. So no man knows when Yahweh Shai will return with Michael and the angels. All right. When he's going to fight and stand against the dragon. See, we know through prophecy, you know, uh, what time and season we're in, but we don't know the set day or hour or, or you know, the day. All right. So verse 8, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Verse 9, and when they had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, Behold, two men stood by him, by them in white apparel. So that cloud, they go that cloud again, which was the chariot that stood over, which is probably, you know, well, ain't no telling. You know, the chariot could have came at the very moment and just took him up, or the chariot could have been disguised and sitting there waiting to take him up. Either way, it took him up in that in that chariot, which was Yahweh Shai, right before the men, man. Right before their eyes. Imagine that, man. You know, you seeing a, a, a brother get taken up in a chariot, man. Right before your eyes. This is what these uh, heathens are gonna witness. They're gonna witness this. That's um, that's uh, in the in the uh, wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. All right, wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. The strangeness of their salvation, so far beyond all that they look for. Okay, so let's continue. It says verse ten. It says, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as they went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So Shai is coming back the way that he was taken away. When he came back and he came back the third day, he resurrected. All right. And he stood with the apostles for 40 days. All right. And he was taken back up. He was take. He left when he was taken up. He was taken up in a chariot. So in the same fashion, he's going to come back in a chariot, man. All right. And this is what Esau is afraid of. OK, just like I said before, this is why he wants the gene edit. He wants to put microchips. He wants to rewrite your DNA. He's looking to to um, he's looking to take his birthright back from Jacob see he is a is a dummy man because you know only if he he uh truly believed the scriptures that he would know that it's impossible you know for him to take his birthright back which was the most high's will you know to give to Jacob Jacob it was it was it was the most high's will for Jacob to supplant Jacob of the birthright so how could you fight that the Lord, the Heavenly Father was with Jacob to do that. All right. He even had Jacob's mother, Rebecca, to help him in taking the blessing. All right. It was all the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And that tells you that in Romans, the ninth chapter. All right. So, you know, I know this lesson is pretty long. I hope I ain't run out of memory. I don't want to do the lesson over. I hope it's edifying. All right. So lock you for all the noise in the background. Uh, I'm actually out in the parking lot was a lot of work at. So. Uh, hopefully, I hope you're edified. You know, these chariots, we look forward to Yahweh Shai return. You know, Elder Apostle Sahari coined this year the year of hasting unto the coming of our Lord, meaning we're hasting and we're praying and we're looking forward to the Lord to speed up the days for the elect's sake, you know, so that we could be delivered and enter into our kingdom, you know, on this earth, you know. So, with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad. Shalom.